Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the top five most common scripting mistakes that I see people make. And hopefully, if you're making one of these mistakes, this video will help you out. And before we get started, if you like these kind of videos, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started. All right, so first up, this mistake is pretty straightforward, but I see it happening quite a bit, and that's basically spelling or punctuation errors. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples so I can show you what I mean. All right, so this is going to be an example for spelling and punctuation errors. Up top here, we have the correct line of code, which is a variable for this part over here. And down below here are some common mistakes. So the first one is just a straightforward spelling error. In this case, for the word part, they misspelled it to port. And this really isn't an issue as long as you keep the same variable name later on in the script. So if you do something later on like port.transparency and you give that some value, that would work out because this is just the variable name. What's going to cause you issues though is if you start with this misspelled, but then you switch back to part later on in the script, it's not going to work. Okay, so that's the first example of this, just a straightforward spelling mistake. The second example has to do with capitalization. So in my example up here, I used a lowercase p for the word part. And even though it's the same word, if you don't follow the same capitalization, it's not going to work the same. So just be careful when you're copying the script that you not only follow the same spelling, but also the same capitalization. In this example right here, it's another case of capitalization. So in this case, on the right side of the equal sign, we have brick, which should match the name of the part in the Explorer menu. But you can see in the Explorer menu, I used a capital B. And over in the script here, we have a lowercase b. So whenever you're doing something like this, just like in the example above, make sure the capitalization matches. So you can either change this one to a lowercase b or change this one to an uppercase b. And in the final example here, we have one more case of spelling error. In this case, we misspelled the word game. Instead of an m, we put an n. And you can see out of these four examples here, this is the only example that gives you an indication that something is wrong. So if you ever see this blue line underneath the word, that's likely a spelling error. What makes this mistake kind of hard to catch is you can see here out of the four examples, only one of them actually alerted you that something was wrong. So that's why it's important whenever you're copying code or an example that you follow the spelling, the capitalization, and also the punctuation. All right, so that covers that mistake. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I see this one happen quite a bit. Let's say you're building something and you insert a bunch of parts into the game, but you don't bother to rename your parts. Then later on, when you're going to your script, you might do something like this, where you say local part is equal to game.workspace.part. The problem with this though, is the script has no idea which part you're actually trying to talk about. So you could be trying to talk about this part right here, but the script has no idea because all these parts have the same name. So what I would recommend doing is whichever part you wanna write a script for, let's say it's this one right here, then give that one a unique name. And it can really be whatever you want to. So let's say for example, that this part is gonna be touched, then maybe I might call this one touch part. And then on the script, what you would do to update it is instead of saying just part, you would actually put the name of the part, which is gonna to be touch part. Then later on, let's say I wanna do something with this part right here, then I would also give that one a unique name. And then if I wanna talk about this part later on in the script, I can do something like this here. For these other parts in the game here, if I'm not going to be writing a script for them, then you don't have to worry about renaming them. But I would recommend that anytime you're going to be using a part in a script, that you give it a different name. All right, so that covers that mistake of having multiple parts with the same name and then trying to write a script for those. So let's go ahead and move on to number three. All right, so the next common mistake that I see is using spaces in the names of parts and objects. And by itself, it's not really a mistake, but a lot of times people don't know how to handle that on the script. In this example here, I have a part. The name of my part is my space part. And then a lot of times on the script, this is what I would see. On the scripting side, they may do something like this here, where they say local part is equal to game.workspace.my space part. And while it makes sense that they're trying to match this part to the name of their part over here, you can't have spaces like this in the script. So what you have to do instead is use square brackets. So if you want to talk about this part, you would say game.workspace, and then you would put a square bracket, and then you would put the name of the part inside of quotation marks. 
So you do my, and then you would still put the space here and part. Okay, so that's how you would handle a case like that. So another example of where spaces are used incorrectly is in variable names. So when you're making your variable name, you also can't have spaces in between the two words. Some different ways around this is you can use a underscore, or if you want to, you can have both of the words together and then use a capital P for the second word. This applies to other objects as well. So for example here, if I have a tool called cool sword with a space in between, then you would still use the square bracket notation. And the same goes for models. If you have a space in between the two words, you would use square brackets. All right, so this mistake is kind of tricky and it's not obvious how you're supposed to fix it at first. So hopefully this helped. Let's go ahead and move on now to mistake number two. All right, so this mistake is something that kind of blows my brain that people don't know about. So in Studio, you have something called the output section, which is this thing right here. So in this section right here, when you run your game, it'll show you if you have any mistakes or errors coming up in your scripts. So in this example right here, we have local part is equal to game.workspace.part. But you can see here that the capitalization doesn't match the name in the Explorer menu. What we're trying to do though is change this part's transparency equal to one to make it invisible. But let's go ahead and run the game and I can show you how the output section works. All right, so let's say I ran my game and I was expecting this part to be invisible when I joined the game, but it's not working. So what you can do is you can just go back to the script and try to look through everything and see if it matches whatever you're trying to copy. It may be easy to notice for a short script like this what the problem is, but as you get longer and longer scripts, it's gonna be more difficult to catch the mistakes right away. So that's where the output section comes in really handy. So under the view tab here, if you open up the output section, it'll show you down here all the mistakes that are happening with your scripts. So anything in red is an error that comes up in your script. And the nice thing about this, if you click on the red line, it's gonna bring you to the exact line in the code where there's a mistake. And then it also gives you a brief description of what the error is. So in this case, it says part is not a valid member of workspace. And if you know that you do have that part in the workspace, which we do, then what you would need to do is check to make sure that the spelling and also the capitalization matches. So in this case, if I go over to the Explorer menu, I see that my part does exist in the Explorer menu. But if I go back to the script now and compare the names, I see that the capitalization doesn't match. So in that case, it's very easy to fix my mistake. All I would have to do is change the lowercase p to an uppercase. So please, anytime you're testing your game and you notice an error or something doesn't go the way you expect it to, go ahead and open up the output section and try to look at some of the mistakes that your scripts are causing. Okay, and this is actually gonna lead into our final mistake, which is knowing how to ask for help in the comment section. All right, so when I make these videos, I try to do my best to answer the questions in the comment section, but it's kind of frustrating to see things like this where it just says like doesn't work or don't waste your time with this. The reason this is frustrating is because comments like these are not giving me any information about what's going wrong with your script. So it could be any number of things and I would have no idea. So if you make a comment that says, help me, this doesn't work, there's really nothing I can do unless you give me more information to try to help you. So after watching a video and trying a script and you still need additional help, these are the three things that I would recommend doing. The first thing is double check everything. So make sure that you followed all the steps in the video and you also copied everything down correctly. If you did that step and you're still having issues, then in the comments section, what I would include is a description of what's happening with your script. So explain to me what's happening or what's not happening and also give me the error code. So in the comment section, I would write something like this here. So in the first part, I'm describing what's happening. So it says when I run the game, the part doesn't turn invisible. So that gives me an indication of what the error is. And then another thing I would do is include the error message that I find in the output. So I just copy and paste that right into the comment. And that way that gives me a good indication of how to help you with your script. If I see something like this, it's normally pretty easy for me to give you feedback of how to fix your script. But if you say something like it doesn't work, help me, I don't know what's going on. There's really nothing I can do to help you unless you give me more information. Okay, and one final tip that's not really a mistake, but just a tip that I would recommend that you do. Anytime you're watching a video or a scripting example, what I would recommend is that you do that on a separate file and don't try to incorporate it right away into your game. That way you can kind of test it out on a separate file where there's nothing else going on. Once you get it right in that separate file and you understand what's going on with the script, then it's a lot easier to try to bring it into your game. If you have a game that you've already made a lot of progress with, then sometimes it's kind of hard to add a new part into it just because there's so much going on. So anytime you want to do something new, I would recommend just doing that on a separate file. And then once you have it good on that separate file, then you can work on incorporating it into your main game. 
All right, so I hope this video was helpful. And if you're making one of these mistakes, I hope you're able to fix it now. If you like this kind of video and you want me to do more of these, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.